Hi everyone, LazyFire here. Welcome back to Battlefield 4 Multiplayer. This is Operation Metro and we're playing Domination. And if this looks similar to the Operation Metro map that we played where I had Gats and Vicissitude guest on, it's because Operation Metro Conquest and Operation Metro Domination have almost the exact same map structure. There's some small differences. Uh, you can't go as far back near the A point or the C point there. But yeah, there's basically the exact same flag points and everything. Uh, most maps are actually smaller. They're usually slices of one of the maps. Let's say Silk Road is a, the military base that's at the center of the map. Whereas this is basically just the entire Operation Metro map. Now, this is an interesting game mode because it does basically play off of how Conquest works. You have points on the map, you take those points, you drain the enemy's tickets, you kill them, and you win. And once you've drained all the tickets for the other team, you've won the game. However, there are a few different things here. One, there are no bases to spawn in, and you can't spawn on the points that your team has. You'll just spawn at random, or you can spawn on your teammates, as you'll see here in a moment. I'm actually going to go mess with my loadout for this class for a second, and you're going to see a bit of a jump cut there. Uh, because of this, it means that you're going to be relying a lot more on random spawns. So you can see here, I can spawn on these guys, but I can't, and I can spawn on the uh, beacon I put up in the area near B, but I can't spawn anywhere else. So you kind of rely on your teammates to be alive, and you're going to just hold out hope that you're going to be able to jump in on somebody who's near a point. If you can't, you can just deploy at random. And if you've ever played a Call of Duty game, and this is basically domination from Call of Duty, uh, you know that there's a bit of a problem with those random spawn points, in that there's a lot of spawn camping, spawn flipping, and all this other stuff. This game is really, really aggressive about allowing a spawn flip. And you'll see it a few times in the video, like here we've basically taken all points, or we've lost all points after taking all but one, uh, because the enemy team just basically had a really good spawn flip. Right there I got a kill with the claymore I planted in my first life. Claymores do not disappear uh, between lives, similar to anti-tank mines. Unfortunately C4 does disappear between lives because uh, in Battlefield 3, when the game first launched, there was this issue where people would throw C4 on a tank and die, and then just respawn and hit the clicker and destroy the tank. Kind of a weird issue to have, but I understand why C4 has to disappear a little bit more after finding that one out. So here we go, planting a claymore. If you plant a claymore, it makes the other claymore you have on the map disappear, but because mine's gone, not a big deal. Anyways, the fights in Domination are a bit more intense than you get on Conquest. It's a much more focused game mode. In a map like Metro, you're already going to have these pretty close firefights, so it's not really vitally important they uh, make the map smaller. Uh, I do feel like Metro Conquest and Metro Domination are different enough game modes, though, uh, because, well, to be fair, Metro and Domination does seem like it's a bit faster, a bit more... Uh, a bit more streamlined, and that's partially because Domination is 32 players versus the 64 that you could fit on Conquest Metro. Uh, that's just far too many people, and I'm glad that there is some sort of balance towards that end. But uh, we don't even have uh, 32 people in here. There are, I think, 18 at the maximum. Just going to town with this shotgun, no big deal. Actually, the shotgun, the 870 I'm using, is just absolutely fantastic for this map. Uh, pump action shotguns in this game are pretty, pretty powerful. Here I'm trying to beg this guy to drop some ammo for me because I almost ran out in that uh, firefight over there. But yeah, the pump actions are pretty great, especially for this map. I have a full choke on this 870, so I'm able to aim down sights and hit some pretty decent targets. You'll see that later on. You'll also see me hip fire some of these guys. This is the mode where, and this is a map where you get a lot of uh, very obvious hit detection issues. So you'll have moments where you're just firing on somebody who's straight ahead of you and he's not moving and he just shrugs off all the shells or all the pellets. And you kind of wonder what's happening there. But that's mostly because of the issues with the uh, with the hit detection in this game as it exists. Now since the last video I did and this video, they actually announced a CTE. It's a test environment that they can have people join. And they apparently have made some changes to the netcode and the way networking works in the game so that hit detection is apparently much, much better. So we'll see how that goes in a few months and uh, how that all works when they put it into the game proper. And so this is kind of how Metro works. People are going to be flipping around, going to point to point. You can't spawn on the points you have, so you have to kind of rely on random numbers to uh, put you near the points you want to be at. 
God, I love the shotgun. Uh, I, you know, to be fair, I can't really get shotguns to work for me on every map. Right there, that I should have hit at least a couple pellets on that guy. Uh, but when you can get a shotgun to work on a map like this or Operation Locker, it just feels good. Being able to just drop somebody with that thing in a couple shots. Now, I changed a bit more about the shotgun here. I put on a laser sight. This will decrease my hip fire spread, which should help things, but I keep turning the laser off because I'm an idiot. I don't want to be detected if you have a laser on your gun, which I never ever use. You'll actually be able to, the enemy will actually be able to see that coming, so they will generally know where you are or if you're going to be nearby. So it's a good idea to turn that off when you're trying to sneak up on people. That right there, 51 point kill assist from the incendiary grenade. Look at that! Look at that hit! That's amazing! That's uh, just, that's how much I love the shotgun. This is actually the best part of this whole video. Just watch this absolute destruction I can wreck with this thing in this area. And this is why I like Metro sometimes. You're just able to do this stuff. So I just dropped those guys over there. I thought that was a bad guy too. And then watch this. I'm waiting for these guys to come through this elevator. Because I know that one of them went back down there. And I can hear a spawn beacon. I thought about going down there and then this happened. Okay, that's two down. Three down. That, that's just, between that and the other time I hit those guys there, that's just amazing. Uh, domination is one of those modes where if you start doing really well, uh, it either means the other team's messed up. Here, watch my score. This would be interesting. 18 and 4. I didn't think I was doing that well, and don't worry, I start to fuck up towards the end of the match. Uh, but doing well in domination is kind of difficult because it's even with the smaller player count in this it's the smaller map sizes that really hurts uh, and not hurts I, I should say changes the game so you're basically going to be on a much smaller map and there's going to be a lot of coverage on you no matter where you are so I've had games of this uh, Land King Dam is a really good example it's a map where instead of having this entire huge area they reduce it down to uh, these two office or three office buildings that are in the center of the map or a little off center of the map and in doing that they actually made this really hectic area I can't really describe it well but it's sort of like this triangle of death where people are on rooftops people are in windows people are running around this parking lot getting shot by those people and there's a lot of coverage from one building to the next. So you could be fighting a guy in your building and then get shot by a guy in the next building over and have really no recourse against him. In Metro, things are a bit more wide open. There's a lot better sight lines to it. So I don't feel like you're uh, constantly kind of fighting the environment to keep you from being killed by it. Uh, that said, that guy probably should have been hit at least once by some of that spread, but whatever. I have a full choke on the 870, which means that the cone of fire will be much, much tighter if I aim down sights. It does matter, believe it or not. So I have to make sure to aim down sights when I can, but my instincts are always, and here we go, random spawn, look at that, puts me near A. Now watch how this goes. They're here too. The spawn algorithm in Battlefield 4 is a lot better than the spawn algorithm that uh, governs the Call of Duty games. Because spawns in Call of Duty games, if you've uh, not played those, are not really great all the time. Uh, there's a lot of spawning into enemy areas, and there's a lot of spawn camping. What you can do is basically spawn lock a team by knowing exactly where you can stand and where you can go and where you can look when a team's been pushed back into a point. And this happened quite a bit. It, it usually centered around a single capture point on the map, so you wouldn't go towards that capture point. Uh, I can think of a few. A on Interchange, which was a, a freeway-based map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Watch this. This is stupid. I don't know why I did that. I fired on a Claymore that was facing me. I thought it was facing away, to be fair. Anyways, that map was actually pretty famous for it. It, it would uh, really end up being, if you took A on Interchange, kind of your death sentence, because it was too far away from the other points to really do anything, and a competent team could trap you in there so easily and so fast. That was a pretty good distance kill with the 870 there. In Battlefield 4, though, the spawn algorithm is a bit more generous, and if there are enemies in a specific area, they will try to spawn you as far away as possible. Uh, if they show up in that area while your team's there and you spawn on them, well, you get what you deserve. There's no base to spawn in like you have in uh, you know, Conquest or Rush. 
you have to rely on teammate spawns or you have to rely on the random numbers. So I generally rely, uh, try to rely on the random numbers unless I know my teammates are in a good spot. This here is a suicide run. I figured I would just try to get the uh, flag for us and see how that goes. Unfortunately, too many people here, so fuck this guy. God, I love it. So the flag uh, capture area is supposed to be a bit smaller in Domination, but I think it's actually the exact same size for this map. Not entirely sure. Watch that. I don't know what just happened there, but both those guys died. I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the points for that. I'm kind of sad. I was hoping to get the double kill there. Mm, too bad. Now watch this. Oh, wait, that's a different... Okay, well, I just sounded like an idiot. Okay, so half my team's in that ticket booth there. You can see my entire squad actually is in that ticket booth. Not a good spot to be in when you only have one point. So I'm trying to break out of that spawn lock a little bit. And it's not really a spawn lock. If your team is deciding to be in those areas, you know, that's not a spawn lock, I guess. Well, I just got fucked there. I deserve that, though. And you see a lot of claymores on this map right now. Uh... The goons I was playing with and I were putting them down, basically, to try to get some claymore kills. A lot of us don't have many, and uh, some people are, and I'm not participating in this, trying to get to 500 kills with the claymore. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to do that to save my life. You know, I, it occurred to me when I was thinking about this video earlier today that I hadn't really talked about... Just AWS there. AWS has become a super weapon, so if you ever see me die to that a lot, that's because of that. It's just a really good gun now, uh, even with the first nerf they put on it. Anyways, the shotguns in this game are really interesting because, uh, unlike a lot of games, they don't use hitscan in Battlefield. So the shotguns actually have, like, actual pellets that travel, and because of that, you can still hit distant targets, and the shell dis or the the pellet dispersal will actually be the problem there for you, instead of the bullets or the pellets just straight up disappearing. But there are also some really interesting... Look at that. Olive Branch was super not happy about that moment. Uh, anyways, the pellets in this game are just one of the many options you have for using your uh, using your shotgun. You can put darts on it, flechettes, which will travel through objects and people and uh, fly a little bit tighter. Uh, you can also put on slugs, which in Bad Company 2, if you put that and magnum ammo on your gun, you could basically one-shot snipers from a mile away with those things and just basically be awesome. In Battlefield 3, they toned it down a bit because it was, I'm not going to lie, a little bit broken that that thing could basically destroy someone from a mile away. Uh, but they've uh, taken that to an extreme in Battlefield 4, and slugs are just about useless. I think I have maybe one kill with them in the entire time I've played this game. Uh, I really do like just plain buckshot. I've used frag grenades once or twice, so you can have frag rounds in your shotgun. And they don't feel right, they drop a lot, and they don't do a ton of damage. So, it used to be in early Battlefield 3, there was a gun called the USAS-12. And it's an automatic shotgun, and it just would absolutely dominate people if you put frag rounds on it. It used to be something of a super weapon. Yeah, right there, I just got wrecked. I, I deserved that. But yeah, it used to be something of a super weapon, they nerfed it to all hell, and in Battlefield 4, I don't know if it's a joke or not, it's a battle pickup that you can pick up on maps like this one, with uh, frag rounds and a uh, and a sight on it. It was actually really powerful uh, for a lot of people who can use it well, but with the limited ammo it has, it's not really worth your time. There are automatic shotguns. I'm using a 870, which is a pump-action shotgun. There are also semi-auto shotguns. I usually use a Saiga, actually, which is actually pretty good. It's uh, The pump-action shotguns generally do a bit more damage. Uh, the trade-off is, of course, you can't put as many rounds downrange as somebody with an automatic or semi-automatic shotgun. And most of the pump shotguns are actually not magazine-fed, but rather fed from a tube underneath the uh, shotgun. So you... Well, that's basically why you have to pump action it. But um, because of that, they are also generally smaller ammo capacity. The smallest ammo capacity, I think, still belongs to the M1014 uh, or whatever it is. Uh, the, it's basically your semi-auto shotgun that everyone uses. Uh, that is not the Saiga. It's 
a pretty decent gun. It just has, I think, four rounds or five rounds with one in the chamber or something like that. Um, not really ideal. You'll be able to kill some things with it, but it's still better to go with the 870 just because the time to fire on it is actually pretty low. You can also use the SPAS or SPAS. Um, I was never a big fan of it in Battlefield 3, and I really haven't toyed around with it in Battlefield 4 at all, so can't really comment on that. But shotguns are a lot of fun. They're an all-class weapon, and there is something called the Super Shorty, which is a 12-gauge mini shotgun, basically like a sawn-off, but uh, it has three rounds instead of two, that you can use instead of a pistol. It's not great, but it's not terrible. It's one of those things that you look at it and you go, it's got a purpose, which is to piss off people, I guess. Uh, but, you know, why would I use it when I can use something that works a little bit better? So a lot of people kind of ignore it or uh, use it on maps like this one where they're going to be in close a lot of the time. You could actually have an all-shotgun build if you really wanted to. Not that I would suggest it. And, of course, I'm using the Recon class. Now, Red and Torov actually mentioned something about the Recon class earlier in the thread, or in the thread after I said I was going to post this video, I should say. And it was that Recon is an actual pretty good class if you happen to use a shotgun and C4 and Wizard Balls. And I mentioned this in the intro to the Battlefield multiplayer video I did. Just looking for some people here. I heard a spawn beacon. Don't know why I was doing that, though. I was kind of hoping to entice some people to come over here to try to destroy this and get hit by a claymore, but eh, you'll see that doesn't work out. Anyways, the the thing he mentioned were wizard balls, which are these motion tracker balls that you can toss out, and I mentioned those in the uh, very first video I did, like I said, and they're really useful. I do like them, but for this build in particular, I decided to go with the claymores and the spawn beacon. In Domination, having that spawn beacon can be a huge thing. It allows your team to spawn near a point instead of at random or on you if you happen to be running away from a point or in trouble. They can just spawn on the spawn beacon. Now, in Metro, there's not a lot of really clever places to hide them that are actually near points. In the Capture the Flag mode on this map, which is actually pretty fantastic, I enjoyed our time playing that, uh, it's a little bit easier because there are some areas like the locker rooms over near A, and uh, the buildings on the outside near the sea point that are pretty decent for it, actually. Uh, you can hide a, you can hide something there pretty easily and get away with it. So, you know, they've got their purpose. And with me, I think you know, hiding them somewhere near a point is actually a pretty good idea, even if it gives your team a temporary advantage at taking it. It's a pretty good advantage. I got revived there and immediately shot to death. No, wait, I got the kill and then got shot to death. Like I said, that was a guy with a DMR he couldn't put me down. It's really great. I love it. So you can see we're actually up pretty far here. It's uh, not been a very distant match at any given point. You know, we're basically holding on to just two points, not really able to make much of a break outside of that. Uh, this is actually a good thing. I, I think that's one of the things I like about Domination is that it's really close till just the end of the game and unless you have two teams that are just absolutely uh, you know one team is terrible trash and the other team is pretty good uh, then it can be pretty bad but these guys you can see one guy is going over to C here he's already spotted and you have other people who are moving around and the the ability to have the spawns change and flip so there are different advantages and disadvantages showing up is actually one of those big selling points for Domination. I still really like the bigger game modes, so Conquest and so on, where you can have 64 or 48 players in there. That's really what I like about this game, and uh, part of the reason why I even built a PC to play it. But for whatever reason, a, uh, a group of goons bought a server, and this is what we play on it. So I'm pretty okay with it, actually. Oh, watch this. <laughs> Uh, Beastman actually uh, destroyed a pillar I was underneath, and that caused the roof to collapse on me. He's a nice guy. So, he uh, he and I were talking in the chat, like, why the hell did you do that? He was trying to kill the guy I was firing on. It happens. This is uh, actually one of the things they changed in Metro, was that you can knock down areas of the ceiling and kill people like that. It's actually pretty cool. I, I like the change. And right there, I got an assist on a Claymore. Oh well. 
But yeah, that's Domination. I hope everyone enjoyed that. We have one more video, a Rush video, that will probably be coming up right after this one. But let's take a look at what score got was uh, received here. I definitely leveled up some shotguns, got some battle packs, got a service star. Not a bad deal. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time, I guess.